Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the best betting show on YouTube. Um, we had another banger week for me personally. I'm up $893 from last week. Uh, I had a perfect week. All of my single bets hit. Um, I'm, I've been killing it. I've been on a very hot streak. I had a bad week four. Week five and week six have been very, very profitable for me. Matt, uh, <laughs> what, what's 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 the deal, man? What's going on? <laughs> Well, at first I was, you know, consistently winning, and now I'm, uh, I'm consistently losing. If you, if you've seen the graphs, it goes from gaining a bunch, and then I kind of plateau, and then I just fall off the face yep. of the earth. So it's basically yep. just going straight down in uh, the ways I've been winning. So hopefully this week, I, I will say I do like the, I do like the games this week a little bit more than the last couple of weeks. I, I yeah. think I even said that I was like, yeah, these last few weeks I haven't really loved the lines. This week I think they're a little bit better. So I'm, I'm looking forward to hopefully getting back in the green. But Mike, you're, you're killing me right now, man. You're over. You're up over two grand. I'm at. I'm still up eight hundred bucks on the year. That's still decent, but you're up yeah. over two grand. So you're smoking me right now. I am smoking you. And uh, I don't know. I don't know if you've seen the video of that guy that was in jail that made the the like six leg parlay to post bond because he couldn't afford bail or whatever, and he just had a fucking like banger parlay. That's what you need this week, Matt. So I think I think you got a banger parlay cooking. We need something for you. But um, getting into this week's bets, you know, normally we kind of think similarly about a lot of the bets. Um, I think we only have one this week that is the same, uh, maybe two. So, Matt, uh, do you want to kind of get into our first bet that we both think of for this week? So the one that we are both going to be going with is actually Browns minus three. And I, I really like this one a lot. I mean, I'm putting 300 bucks on it. Mike, you're putting 500 bucks on it. That's that's the highest numbers that each of us are betting this week. So this is our the Browns minus three is the lock of the week for us. Yep. And if you look at both the last last weeks for these both these teams, I mean, the Colts look abysmal Gardner Minshew was terrible they get blown out by the Jags um and then the the Browns defense looked really good against the Niners and the Niners were banged up they also weren't starting they're starting PJ Walker and they and they beat the Niners so I think you got to give them credit there I mean their defense is going to hold their own I think that the reason I like this one so much is you need three points from the Browns team and their defense is probably going to absolutely obliterate the Colts offense like it's like a huge huge mismatch right now I mean the Browns are one, like a top three, top five defense in the league right now. So I love it. I think this is definitely the lock of the week, and I feel I feel really confident in this game. Yeah, I feel very confident in this game as well. Like you mentioned, the Browns defense has been just suffocating people all year. I mean, if you can beat the – if you, you were you were talking about it last week. The Niners were averaging like 30 points a game with Brock Purdy, right? They scored 17. So you automatically kind of just cut that in half. The Browns defense is amazing. The Colts offense, especially without Anthony Richardson, it's not very good, unfortunately. Um, look to obviously see more of Jonathan Taylor this week, I would think. But, I mean, the Browns, I think Deshaun Watson is going to be back. And although I don't love Deshaun Watson, he's definitely an upgrade over XFL QB legend P.J. Walker. So we'll see. But I think Browns minus three is my lock of the week. I have been very successful the last couple of weeks on putting big money on one particular bet. I'm doing it this week at the Browns. 500 bucks. I like it. Minus three. Yeah, and then I'll move right on to my second biggest bet, and it's going to be the Jags. They just talked about that they killed the Colts last week, and they're going up against a Saints team that, I mean, I still think that the Saints could make the playoffs, but their offense is just not good. Um, Derek Hart looks washed. It, it just looks really bad there, and the Jags look like they're kind of flipping the flipping the script a little bit from some early season struggles. I think this is a really good defensive matchup for both these teams, but I just think the Jags have been significantly better. Yes, they're on the road, but we also have to remember that like the Jags don't really have any type of home field advantage as is. I mean, they they're play always on the road. Yeah. And they play in London for a couple of their home games. So it's like, I don't know, man, I, I, I like the Jags in this one. Yes. It's a, it's a tough environment in new Orleans, but the saints don't look that great. Their defense does look really good, but if the Jags can just be decent on offense, I think they're going to win this one pretty comfortably because let's be honest, the saints offense just sucks. So yeah. I'm putting 200 on that one. Um, and that'll be my second biggest bet of the week. Yeah. The only I guess quarrel I would have with that is if Trevor Lawrence doesn't play, which he says he's optimistic. He says he's going to play. Um, but if he doesn't, obviously I would reconsider it a little bit, but you get Trevor Lawrence, Travis Etienne the last couple of weeks has been really, really good. Um, they are hopefully going to involve Calvin Ridley a little bit more. I like the pick. I didn't put money on it just because I don't know what the status is for Trevor Lawrence, but I don't hate it. And I'm not going to disagree with you. All right. And then for my next bet, I'm going to be putting $200 on Eagles minus two. Now, Matt, we've talked about primetime games this year and how they haven't been good. And really, we have not had good primetime games. I mean, we're like seven weeks in the year. We haven't had any. This is our last hope. I mean, this is like 
Dolphins, Eagles, Monday, or, I'm sorry, Sunday night. The Eagles, I don't know if you know, are going to wear the Kelly Greens, the ones that I love. So it is going to be a fun, fun game on Sunday night. Now, the Eagles are coming off a bad loss against the Jets. They scored 14 points. Jalen Hurts threw three interceptions. I get it. I think that we're going to see a pissed off Eagles team. I think we're going to see an Eagles team that stops playing so sloppy because not only was Jalen Hurts bad, that one interception he threw, Dallas Goddard like was, you know, bobbling in the air. It floated up and then Quinn and Williams of all people intercepted it. Like that's just sloppy stuff. And I think the Eagles got a little high off their own scent. They're going to buckle down. They're going to play good football. And you know what? They're going to run the damn ball. I don't think Miami's front seven is going to be capable um, of stopping the Eagles. And I think they're going to run the ball. They're going to play their football. And they're going to just basically keep the Dolphins offense so far off the field that they win this game by a field goal. Yeah, so I, I think a lot of the stuff you're saying is right. But I'm actually going to be going with the Dolphins' money line. I, I just think the Eagles have – I don't – they've been winning games, but they haven't been looking very good. And I think them going up against the Dolphins' offense is going to be a, a pretty big mismatch, I think, for them. Just because I don't think their secondary is really good. They've given up a lot of points. I'm um, obviously not to the – the Jets, but that's different. Um, but like, you know, the commanders kind of had their way with that secondary because they have good receiving core. Sam Howell's look good. And now we look at this one, we go, okay, this is a huge, in my opinion, this is a pretty big advantage for the Dolphins wide receivers, for Tyreek Hill, for Jalen Waddle, for Tua. Um, the big thing is, can their offensive line kind of hang with the, the Eagles defensive line? And I think one of the biggest things in this game is coaching. Dolphins are an extremely well coached football team. Mike McDaniel, and Vic Fangio. That's his, that might be the best, like, both sides of the ball in the league, which is, I mean, that's a high praise for those guys. But, I mean, Vic's been, Vic's been one of the best for a long time. But yeah, Mike yeah. McDaniel's legit. I mean, he looks really good. So, if they are explosive on offense, and you're talking about that the Eagles are going to run the football, well, we all know that that's what they're going to try to do. Everyone knows that's what they're going to try to do. And I think that's part of the reason that their offense have looked, has looked kind of out of sync at times. And I think that Vic Fangio is going to, maybe have a little bit of an answer to that and say, okay, you want to beat us. You're going to have to push the ball downfield a little bit more than you like to do. And I, I think it's going to be close. I think it's, I hope it's a good game. I think it's going to be a good game. It definitely can go either way, but I, I think that the dolphins are just playing a little bit better football right now. So I'm rocking with them. So we're on the opposite side in this one for my next bets. I am also going to be putting $200 on it. I'm going to go with the Washington commanders minus two. Uh, listen, I think Sam Howell has looked really good. You were just talking about it. Sam Howell has looked good. That defense, you know, they have not looked good, but they do have a very talented front seven, right? And so I think that they're able to put up points, and I think as the game gets to its conclusion, they're able to get after the passer. I like Washington in this game, minus two. It's not a big line. Um, I know Washington isn't a great team per se, but a minus two line, putting $200 on it, I don't hate it. I think that it's actually pretty good, and I'm going to trust that Sam Howell continues his hot streak. Uh, hopefully he doesn't get sacked for 40 times in this game, but – uh, I, I do trust that he's going to be able to put up some points and he's going to be able to to win this game by like a field goal. I can see that. I mean, they've, they've been pretty good. I, I actually considered betting that one. The only problem I have with the commanders in this one is that the Giants are coming off of, yes, they lost, but they're coming off of a pretty decent game. They're at home. They they need to win some of these games. Like their defense is starting to play a lot better. So I think it's going to be a pretty tight one. I think it's just kind of a toss up. That, that, that's my thought. Yeah. Yeah, they really shut down the Bills last week. And my personal theory on that is because their coach, Brian Dable, was the office coordinator for so many years. He probably knows the Bills playbook better than the Bills know it at, at this point, you know. So I think he, his defense was the most prepared for a single opponent that they'll probably be all year. And I do think that's fair, but you're right. Bobby, specifically Bobby Okariki has been awesome for the Giants. Uh, they look good defensively. So I don't know. I like Washington a little bit more in this game because, again, Daniel Jones is also still probably injured maybe neck so i don't know i'll take the commanders and then for my final bet just you know sprinkle a little a little benjamin on top of there uh, i'm gonna take the packers minus one over the broncos honestly both these teams are really mid but i think the, Bron the broncos right now are dysfunctional um they are having all sorts of problems with sean payton and russell wilson and it's a whole mess right so i think the broncos morale is at an all-time low even you know from last year right um they're on low. And the Packers, they're at bare minimum, they're a well coached team. I think Matt LaFleur is still a good coach. Aaron Jones, I hope, is going to be back. Uh, he's been, you know, really banged up ever since like week one this year. I think Aaron Jones will be back. I've been hearing good reports on Twitter and stuff. So I think that the Packers offense is going to be able to put up points. The Broncos, if it's not one thing, it's another with them. I don't trust them. I bet against the Broncos pretty much all year, except for the Bears game. Um, I'm going to take the Packers because I think they're a better coach team and they're probably more functional at this point. So I actually don't like this bet. 
Like, and why you're 100 percent right? The Broncos are a mess. They they don't have picks. They are just kind of screwed as an organization. The Packers don't look good, and I I think this is maybe everyone's ripping Russell Wilson, right? But they actually have a pretty significant quarterback advantage in this one, believe it or not, because Jordan true. Love looks he looks bad, dude. He looks like, stinky. Yeah. He makes he'll make plays every once and now and then, but he will just miss throws, miss throws, and and it and it kind of will, like compiles on them. If he does that in this one. The Broncos are kind of starting to play a little bit better. Like they played the Chiefs pretty close, but then their offense was terrible. I, I think their offense is going to be a little bit better in this one. The Packers are all right. They are getting a little bit more healthy on defense. So it's not like the worst bet, but I think it's the same as your your previous bet where it's just like, I don't know, man. Like it's just kind of a toss up game. So I, I think it's a toss up game in this one. That's why I, I, I looked at both these games and I was kind of considering them. I was like, why would I, why would I bet these? Like I, I don't have any faith in these teams. So that's kind of my my overall thought process in both the, the commanders and the Packers. Okay. Now I say I don't have a lot of confidence in these teams, but I am betting on the Raiders this week. Um, so <laughs> hypocrite. So, yeah. A little bit of a hypocrite there. I mean, I'm going, so Raiders minus three, I'm going to put 150 bucks on that. Um, it's not, it's not one I love. I mean, here's the thing. They're playing the bears, the bears without Justin Fields. Yeah. Without Justin Fields. I don't Tyler something is their quarterback. I don't even know this dude's name. Said Tyler Tyson Be- Bajan. Bajan. Tyson. Okay, I thought it was Tyler, dude. Yeah, I, <laughs> I watched a couple plays of him last week, and I was like, "Yeah, that's all I need to know." This one's probably going to be a blowout. Like the the Raiders aren't good. I don't care if they have Brian Hoyer or Jimmy Garoppolo starting. I think they're going to easily take care of business in this one. The only time that the that the Bears have really done much is the two games, one where they lost to the Broncos. Um, but then the one that they beat the commanders in, it was like, okay, well, Justin Fields was going stupid in those games. And that's the only reason they, they won those games. So yeah. Yeah. I, uh, I don't think that this is going to be a particularly close game. And I would recommend that anyone do- doesn't watch their, spend their time watching this game on Sunday because it's not going to be fun to watch. And it's probably going to be a blowout and it's the Raiders blowing someone out. So it's not even a good team, like taking care of business. It's just kind of ugly, but I do like the Raiders in this one. So 150 bucks on them. Yeah. So then for the Bucks and the Niners, I'm putting 150 on the Niners, 100 on the Bucks. I like the Bucks. I think the Falcons are just not a good team. I mean, they Desmond Ritter's not good. They, they run the ball well, like they're okay, but the Bucks, if you look at when the Bucks have won this this year, it's when they're playing a team that's not really good. They've lost the games when they're playing teams that are really good. When they play teams that are about around the same skill like like perceived skill level as them, um or like a team that's not that good, they've taken care of business. They did that against the Vikings. They did that against the Saints. They've just done that pretty pretty well throughout the year. I think that's the same thing with the Falcons in this one. I think they're gonna be they're gonna win this game. Um, I'm only putting hundred dollars, so I'm not super confident. And then the Niners, the Niners are gonna bounce back. No Justin Jefferson for the Vikings. Monday Night Football, Kirk Cousins. Maybe no McCaffrey. Maybe no Depot. Maybe no Trent Williams. Even though it does seem like they're all gonna play, but. Even if those guys don't play, the Niners defense should have their way with the Vikings offense. Like the Viking offense in a primetime game when the Niners are going to be fired up out of their mind. I, I just think this one might be ugly. Yeah. We, we saw the same game last year when the Vikings played the Eagles early on in the season and got absolutely hounded. And that was with their best player. So I don't know. I, I like that one a little bit more. So 150 on the on the Niners. But what do you think about those final three, including those two and the Raiders? Yeah, so uh, Raiders, my only thought about that is that uh, Tyson Badgett better buy some good insurance because I think Max Crosby is going to murder him. Uh, he's going to be screaming off the right side. Um, so make sure you have the hospital on speed dial. Um, but in terms of the Buccaneers, I don't love the Buccaneers. And the reason I don't love the Buccaneers is because I think that in terms of – there's a big there's a big uh, disadvantage because the, the Falcons are able to run the football. And I think they're going to control the clock really well. And the Falcons' defense is actually pretty good. So – you know, Baker's not looked good. He didn't look good last week, obviously, which that happens. Everybody has bad games, but um, I don't love it. Like kind of like what you said with me with like the Packers. It's like, yeah, I don't, I don't know. I don't love it. But the Niners, I totally agree with. Um, you're right. Monday Night Football, Kirk Cousins, no Justin Jefferson. What I said about the Eagles applies to the 49ers this week as well, where they're going to they're be pissed off. They're coming off a bad loss to a subpar team. I mean, let's be real. The Browns are a worse team on paper than the Niners, and they're going to be out to prove themselves. And I think a, a touchdown line, yeah, it's high. But at the same time, the Niners match up really, really well against the Vikings. So, um, yeah, I like I like the Niners a lot more than I like the Buccaneers, I think. And um, I agree with you on that last one. 
Yeah, and we'll see how it all goes. I mean, the Bucks are the ones that I'm probably least confident about. I guess the Bucks and the Dolphins, just because the Dolphins are just in a in a good game. Yeah. Um, that's yeah. why I have only hundred bucks on those two. But I really like. I mean, I really like the weird to say, but I really like the Raiders, the Browns, the Niners, and the Jacks. Like I, I really like those bets. So hopefully, hopefully, like I said, hopping back into the green. Um, but yeah. And then you know, talking about some of the games that we aren't betting, um, we did not touch the Lions and Ravens game. To be completely honest with you, if I had to put another bet on, it would be on the Lions. Um, you know, uh, plus three. I know the Ravens are favored in this game. I don't necessarily love that, but they are at home. And you know, Lamar Jackson. I ne- I never feel good about betting against Lamar Jackson. I feel the same way as you do, Mike. I mean, I almost bet on the Lions. The only reason I didn't is because Monty's not playing, and I haven't seen that offense without him. Now, I know a lot of people will go, well, Jameer Gibbs is so explosive. And when he gets the ball more, he needs to get the ball more. You guys need to actually watch the games and be like, okay, well, Monty eats up the clock. And the reason the Lions win is because Monty eats up the clock and he gets four carry and he's having an insane season. He's also better in pass protection. He does a lot of the little things that Jameer Gibbs doesn't do yet that he might get better at. He might, you know, gain some weight, do some stuff like that to become a better running back. But I do think that's a pretty big blow. Like, I don't think people realize how important Monty is to that offense because he helps their run game so much. So, it's a it's a close game. If he was playing, I would have bet the Lions though, hundred percent. Yeah, no, I agree. Um, again, not betting on the Seahawks and Cardinals game. You guys know I don't bet on the Seahawks. It's a personal rule of mine. Uh, what other games we're looking at right here? Steelers, Rams. I don't know. I mean, don't bet on the Steelers, but like, do you really like the Rams? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't know, man. I, I don't know. Um, Chargers, Chiefs. Chiefs are just going to win. I mean, that's the pretty much that's how it's always is. You know, Mahomes just owns the Chargers, unfortunately. And then the last game we didn't bet on was no, that was it. That's the last game we didn't bet on. So now let's get to the best part of the video and let's get our parlays out the way. All right, Matt. So I tell you all the time that I have just absolutely diabolical parlays. And you guys know we get a free $50 parlay. So why not just load them up? You know what I'm saying? So the parlay I got cooking today. It's a seven leg parlay, auto lock seven leg parlay, obviously, right? Plus 4,050 odds. Not great. Here's what it is, Matt. Here's what it is, right? Jags money line, Lions money line, Bills money line, Browns minus three, Packers minus one, Chiefs money line, Niners money line. How's that? $50 wins me over two grand. Over two grand. It's going to all hit except the Packers money line and you're going to or or the or the Niners you're going to have everything going in the Monday night with the with the easy lock of the Niners and then they're going to choke. That's just the way it works. No, dude, if it no Loki, I would be so nervous cuz if it went into if it went into Monday night with all of them hitting, I might cash it out, dude. I'd be so such a nervous wreck watching that game. I'd be like, I'll just take the I'll just take Yeah, the you six. might as well. You might as well cash it out. That, that's I'd be like, I'll take the long. 600 bucks, bro. That's fine, you know. So, I don't know, but I, I like it plus 4000 odds all my betters out there i mean come on that's a perfect parlay so i can't see this one not hitting matt to be honest with you yeah i'm gonna go a different route so i have i have a couple that are similar i'm going niners money line as well actually these are all part of your parlay but a little (laughs) different yeah so jags money line niners money line and the browns money line so it's plus 347 on a three leg. Yeah, you're not going to be a little ballsier, bro. You're behind. You're not going to be a little ballsier and roll the dice a little bit. I mean, I guess one thing I could do, I could do, actually, let me change it up a little bit. All right. So you you're talking me into it. So move it up plus 428. I'll do, I'll do Browns minus three. So I'll okay. toss that in. So plus 428 odds. I like that a little bit more. I'm pretty confident in the Browns this week. So I, I guess that's fine to rock with. Um, you know, I was thinking about tossing the Raiders and stuff, but I, I, I'm already betting on the Raiders. I don't really have, I don't really love them. So yeah, you, can't put, that. you can't put that much faith in Jimmy G, bro. You can't do no, it. No, you can't. Yeah. So three leg parlay, gonna win, it'll win like around like 200 bucks, I think off the, off the $50. So, but I like it. I think it's a good one. Um, I'm going to need to rely on my bets to actually hit pretty well <laughs> and some of yours to just not hit. Yeah. Well, we have a few of the same ones. So the problem know. is that it's going to be hard to make up ground when we're both heavy on the Browns this week. So that is true. That is true. Yep. That's kind of where I'm at. But yeah. But that's going to be the video, guys. Uh, don't forget to subscribe. As always, I keep the spreadsheets down below if you want to check out our bets, what we're betting on, what we have bet on, et cetera. Um, thank you guys for watching. Matt, thanks you for coming on. And uh, good luck this weekend, buddy. All right?